what is conflict it is defined by a serious disagreement and it can also lead to internal factors it could also be an external factor and as a culture that always evolves we have grown to have beautiful things cultures and knowledge however even if we have gotten this far we still manage to have these conflicts conflicts such as corrupt leaders The exploitative elite. We see a world that has lost its heart because of self-interest. It has seen that we have forgotten our purpose as human beings. We have become so focused with self-interest. Problematic ideologies. Greed. To me, it means that power belongs to the people that take it. Lost. We're gonna make a star out of you. Right. Say it louder. Say it louder. I've abandoned my child. I've abandoned my child. Envy. So, to my eye, all this brilliance. Looks like nothing more than just simple rope copying. Probably of someone else's work. Rats. And slugged. Waking up early is hard. The discomfort we feel in the face of action often paralyzes us from doing anything at all, so we sleep in. We get lost in the rabbit hole of YouTube, TikTok. However, we refuse to believe that there is no more hope. And as long as we always be understanding to those who are neglected. And empathetic to those victims of the neglected. They say that if a child is not embraced by the village, the child will burn it down to fill its warmth. That is the problem. We always clash and we never talk. I believe we should start from the glass roof. Because if we do not compromise, we are doomed to make the same mistakes that leads to anger. Anger that will manifest into conflict. Conflict that is bad for the peace. Bad for the environment. Bad for the oppressed. And bad for the ones with a good heart. It is such a shame that because of people who are so blinded by their conflict, the ones who don't have anything to do with it are caught in the crossfires. We must always engage in communication and compromise for a common ground. Tension because of competition and conflict must be engaged with the notion of peace at all times. We must always uphold the human desire for negotiation and peace. Because if not, then when will it end? When are we going to take the initiative and break the cycle? The cycle of hate. We are living in a generation wherein our grievances can be easily communicated. Which is why we say, no to war, no to corruption, and no to exploitation. No to famine, no to self-centered leaders, and no to fear-mongering leaders. We must always be collective. We, we shall, shall paint, paint the, the town red. red. Not with blood, but, but with, with the, the love, love that the, that the world, world never had. had. Good evening everyone and my name is Terence and I will be talking about conflict with my 
partner, Simer, who will talk about the peacekeeping solutions after my explanation. So, to provide the context of to the video that we have presented earlier that Simer and I produced, is that we created the summary of what our discussion will be and also to emphasize the relevance of the videos to today's events as well. And we wanted to frame it in a way wherein we are all aware of the conflict that is present in the world and also give a brief definition of conflict in the context of what is happening to our world and how these certain conflicts are rooted from a lot of the injustices, a lot of the problematic ideologies, and a lot of the self-interest that is against a collective goal, right? And the very principle that we created throughout that video is that if you also paid attention, we've also mentioned this quote, is that if a child is not embraced by the village, it is most likely that the child will grow up to burn the village to feel its warmth. Now, this is a favorite quote that I've read from the African proverb, and it is very relevant to the video in such ways wherein parties fail to communicate their problems and parties also fail to compromise, which leads to situations wherein a party, a party is left neglected neglected and they manifest into a force of negativity that inspires these conflicts now there's a lot of examples that can prove this and these examples will be definitely discussed more but it is very important that all of you already and understand that conflict usually starts when there is a disagreement between parties and ideas that basically do not intertwine with one another and having agreement disagreements rather with a lot of parties would also breathe a clash between ideas and interest now just a quick disclaimer because we don't want to give you guys the impression that we are being very political in our discussion now simon and i in this video are non-partisan we present ourselves as non-partisan in these videos but the examples we showed in the video in hindsight would, would look very political and we understand for the eyes of many this may seem like um a bias for a lack of a better word a bias for the th principles that we stand for politically and ideologically right but you guys have to understand that the videos that we shown earlier is merely a product of history that has been present throughout the century and by showing you these examples we make everyone aware that in every type of ideology in every type of conflict social dilemma misperception and perceived injustice there is always a political blast root right but since we are discussing history in the context of social psychology, it is important to understand that history is by far and most definitely nonpartisan. Why? Well, because history doesn't serve any color. History doesn't have any bias towards any political event that happened through the past. So it is important to make this, that this kind of distinction. Now, I will expound on this topic in relation to the conf to conflicts in social psychology and this will of of course involve social dilemma competition perceived injustice and misperception now i mentioned earlier that my partner simer will focus more on the process of explaining how peacemaking will go on about in the conflicts that we have mentioned in this certain discussion so in our analysis these are the concepts that will be discussed we're going to in the conflict setting um what we're going to discuss will be social dilemma and how there is a tragedy of commons wherein two parties fight for an, a certain interest in one place which in the end destroys the environment and also evolving motives that might transpire into certain social dilemmas now we are also going to go through competition and how it breeds certain conflict perceived injustice and how the marginalized groups use utilize these kinds of conflict so that they could get the justice that they want and the misperception and how it breeds to a lot of conflict due to a lack of understanding now so i'm going to give a brief definition of what are the, the meanings of this for and then later i'm going to expound on what they mean in social psychology so a social dilemma is basically a creation of conflict between individual interest and collective interest the competition is a hostility wherein groups are would compete for any resources that has a, that is prone to scarcity like housing resources and jobs we also have perceived injustice wherein 
wherein it is a type of justice that is demanding to conflicts that seems unfair to a lot of groups, but mostly marginalized groups. But we're going. I'm going to explain that side in a much more, let's say, in a much more better manner, in a, in a much more non-vague manner, right? And as per misperception, it is often the idea of or conception that is often misunderstood and incorrect, and how misperception is also tied to perceived injustice. Now, so let's talk about social dilemmas. So, in social dilemmas, we're often put in situations wherein our goals as individuals will be compromised for the sake of a more collective goal or vice versa. Now, for example, um, in the grand scheme of things, no, in this, this kind of example is also good, a lawyer will tell you not to testify for their client to win. Or a lawyer will tell you to testify so that you could serve a lower sentence. So in this concept, we see a social dilemma because in one option, you, you, you are given a bargaining chip to not testify for a defendant to most likely be incriminated. On the other hand, we also have an, an example wherein you do the right thing, but it's going to cost you, but for a lesser time of sen- time time of sentence. That is a type of, of social dilemmas that we have. And if there's also this example, the trolley example, wherein you try to save people, a group of five people versus one person in from the train from the train that's about to come from the the rail the train the train tracks, right? That is one good example also. That's the trolley problem. And it is a it is a, a social dilemma that is used by utilitarians to justify why saving a majority a group is better than one. Personally, I'm a utilitarian, and I really believe that if it's it saves more, then it serves the right purpose because it utilizes what makes people happy and what makes people safer. And I, I it, these kinds of social dilemmas are also prevalent in the system that we have right now and with the ongoing elections it's inherently an idea that is present so that people would get to choose what principles will benefit their community in a way the democracy that we have also contains these kinds of social dilemmas now i mentioned earlier about the comments of the tragedies no and i would like to make this kind of example wherein this is a much more international example and it involves international relations as well now when both parties are fighting for example the ideology between the russian and the ukrainian people the west um they're trying to fight for the dominance of power between their ideologies and in return they are damaging the environment because of the war that they are causing we must not forget that there was one time a jet almost landed the nuclear almost landed a bomb in the nuclear power plant of Ukraine, which is in Chernobyl, which could potentially harm the environment. See, um, this is one example of the tragedy of comments because it not only affects the parties that are involved, but the people, the parties that are involved in a certain community. Now, we also have the competition wherein a lot of groups are fighting for uh, uh, resources that, that are scarce in the community they're in. Now, one good example here is the Great Depression and how Germany was able to put the blame. Well, not Germany, because I feel like it's a stretch to say that it's Germany's fault, but rather the Nazi party. They blamed everything on the Jewish people, which is why they blamed them because of the jobs, the, the scarcity that they have with job and housing, uh, which is caused by the Great Depression. And because of that, alt-right groups in Germany were able to create a problem that will convince the people, the supporters of this cause, to be more competitive against these people. Which leads us to perceived injustice as well. Because it's very important that when marginalized groups tend to see an inconvenience as a form of injustice in their end, they're also going to take into account the cultural, the cultural perspectives. Now, because of the political vacuum that has happened dur- throughout Europe in these times, you really cannot blame them for having this kinds of ju- in- perceived injustice. Like, because of so much famine, because of so much bureaucracy, because of so much corruption and so much fascism, 
the idea of Marxism versus capitalism was an example in Meyer's book, which is a very good analysis of what perceived injustice should be, wherein it's a concept between equality versus equity. And between these two ideologies, when one is the much more dominant, the one who suffers from an ideology that is a minority will be subjected to a lot of perceived injustice, which leads to misperception. Uh, uh, by the way, just to add more examples, uh, in a more local perspective, like the perceived injustice that we have as well is, this is part of history, so it's not political, wherein the apologists of the Marcus regime would always say that they were always better off without realizing, and since they are so better off, they see the opposing party as communist already, even though there is no legal basis, there is no peer-reviewed basis for that kind of statement that is an example of of that is an example of perceived injustice because they feel like their lifestyle is threatened because of the certain presence that disagrees that during that era it was a peaceful time that is an example of perceived injustice in the local context which leads to a lot of misperception which is a view that is most certainly a justification for certain actions like yeah this is uh, another example um yeah in, in the court example naman no Kasi puro tayo international relations, no? Yung sa, ano, sa trial ni Amber Heard, pati ni Johnny Depp, di ba? We're in, sa recording, Amber Heard would justify her actions saying that, no, it's not abuse because that's how she sees it in her end, no? And that is an example of misperception, basically. No? So, oftentimes, ano, yung kas- kasama dito sa mga misperception talaga is yung mga self-serving biases ng mga individuals para lang madudge nila yung responsibility sa mga bad behavior nila, di ba? So in summary, no, conflict is basically ano talaga. It is often started by the uncompromised parties in uh, parties that are not willing to compromise and these conflicts will certainly have caused a lot of cer- uh, certain types of social dilemmas and these conflicts also breeds competition that encourages society to put blame on groups which also breeds perceived injustice and mis- misconception now how do we solve all of this my partner simer will be the one explaining all right go ahead simer good day i am simer baldasar na magdi discuss about peacemaking so nakita na natin how conflicts are ignited by social traps competition perceived injustices and misperception. So, dumako naman tayo sa peacemaking. Simulan natin ito sa pagde-define kung ano nga ba ang peace at peacemaking. So, Myers defined peace as the outcome of a creatively managed conflict. Also, peace is the parties reconciling their perceived differences and reaching genuine accord. Also, peace is a condition marked by low levels of hostility and aggression and by mutually beneficial relationship. So, ito yung resulta kapag naayos sa pag usapan natin ang hindi pagkakaunawaan na kung saan nagbe-benefit ang dalawang panig sa napagkasundo ang bagay. While the peacemaking naman, it is an attempt to find a solution on disruptive conflict according kay Wagner noong 2006. And also, it is a renewal of peaceful to terminate conflict according naman kay Berbick and Dewaal noong 2001. So, paano nga ba natin makakamit ang peace? So, ang mga social psychologists ay nag-focus sa apat na peacemaking strategies. Ito ang four C's of peacemaking strategies. Contact, cooperation, communication, and conciliation. Which facilitates the evolution from anger and hostility to harmony. So, ano nga ba ang outcome kapag nakamit natin ng peace? So, nagkakaroon tayo ng low levels of violence, healthy relationships, happiness, and treaty sa mga countries. And lastly, kapag naging madali sa atin ang peacemaking, our society would be so much more peaceful to live in. So, ang first sis sa peacemaking strategy ay ang contact. So, contact, it encourages deeper relations between those who are in, in disagreement. And equal status contact tends to be intellectually growth promoting and foster greater acceptance of differences according kay Myers noong 2009. So, you should make contact with the individuals or individuals. So, contacting them first show that you mean business and wants to resolve the issue. So, this gives the individuals or groups to settle the situation between them before matters gets worse. So, as they settle it, behaviors will change and attitudes will follow. So, next, meron tayong three types of contact. First is yung desegregation or tiyatawag na interracial contact. 
na kung saan ito yung process na ginagawa para mahinto yung paghihiwalay ng dalawang grupo. So, mas applicable ito sa different races. For example, yung black and white people. Kadalasan kasi silang hiwalay because of their skin color. So, dito, kaga, dito sa desegregation, pinagsasama sila. Kaga, sa example, sa isang experiment na isinigawa ni Cairns and Histo noong 2002, pinagsama niya ang dalawang race sa isang small conference na ginawa nila. Which is, in some cases, it improves racial attitudes and lessens prejudice that they feel. Pero sa ibang cases, ah, hindi siya, hindi siya nakaka-improve. Hindi siya, naka, hindi siya nakakalesen ng prejudice. Another example, the more contact straight people have with gays and lesbian, the more accepting they become, according kay Collier et al. 2012 at Smith et al. noong 2009. So, who you know matters. So, next na type of contact is yung friendship or misan tiyatawag na intergroup contact. So, friendship, it is the key to have a successful contact. Friendship is a, is a voluntary and reciprocated bond between two people. It also serves as an anchor for an individual's personal cognition of the outside world. So, according to some thoughts of social psychology, serve as an anchor for an individual personal cognition of the outside world. So, meaning nito, yung friendship daw, ah, nire-remind tayo that we exist and we matter to the world. So, how does intergroup contact reduce prejudice? So, sa mga contact researchers kagaya ni Ananti Al Ramiya and Miles Histone noong 2013, friendship reducing anxiety. So, more contact brings greater comfort. It increases emp empathy. Contact helps people put themselves in the other shoes. Also, it enhances it enhance the knowledge. So, enabling people to discover their similarities. And lastly, decreasing perceived threat. So, uh, alleviating our blown fears and increasing trust. So, third naman is yung equal status contact. So, it's an interaction or relationship with another person or group who is on the same social level as you. So, an equal status contact is a person or group who has similar background, history, social role, and education. So, this is a concept of the contact hypothesis which is a theory regarding how best to improve relation between groups that display hostility towards each other. So, conflict can be reduced between in-groups, out-groups, and majority-minority groups successfully if several factors are in place. So, the second C is yung cooperation. So, it is especially beneficial when opposing groups work together to avert a common threat or to achieve a goal that will benefit both sides. It is the coordination of multiple individuals towards a goal that benefits the entire group. So, ano nga ba ang nakakapag-trigger ng cooperation? So, first is yung common external threat, na kung saan meron tayong isang kinakalaban at pinaglalaban, which also builds cohesiveness. Cohesiveness means sticking together. So, for example, sa isang school, minamaltrato ng president ang mga estudyante by increasing the tuition fees. So, tayong mga estudyante ay magsama-sama para mapigilan yung mangyari yung bagay na yon So, nakikita yung cooperation between the students because of the common threat. Next naman is yung superordinate goals. So, it is a shared goal that necessitates cooperative effort, a goal that overrides people differences from one another. So, for example, sa book ni Myers, ang example is to promote harmony among his warring campers, Sherry introduced such goals. So, he created a problem sa water supply ng camp. So, dahil dito, it necessitates the both group's cooperation to restore the water supply sa camp nila. Next naman is yung cooperative learning. So, it is where in a given situation, everyone in a group learns something new and beneficial to them. So, binibigan sila ng isang task. So, dito papasok si interracial cooperation na kung saan sa isang grupo, both different races ay magkasama. For example, sila ay naggrupo sa isang class na kung saan sama-sama sila for a class project. So, hindi na mag-cooperate with each other despite of their different races which melt differences and improves racial attitudes. So, cooperative learning kasi kailangan nila mag-cooperate para matuto sa kung paano gagawin yung class project na yun, paano nila mapagtatagumpayan yung class project na yun. So, the third C sa peacemaking strategy is yung communication. So, kagaya ng sinabi ni Terence, to resolve a social dilemma, 
people must communicate. So, ano nga ba yung communication? So, communication is a two-way interaction where information, meanings, and feelings are shared according kay Dune no 2005. So, effective communication conveys the right information, enables others to know one individual's feelings and meanings. So, it expresses a kind attitude and to a certain extent, it helps to avoid interpersonal conflict and decreases misunderstanding. So, the real cause of conflicting individuals or, or groups is because of lack of communication. So, without communication, you have nothing to work with. So, more often, communication enables cooperation. According to Bornstein et al., no, 1988 and 1999. So, discussing the dilemma forges a group identity, which enhances concern for everyone's welfare. So, it devises group norms and expectation and pressures the members to follow them. So, for example, nag-away kayo ng yung jowa. So, hindi ito maayos kung hindi ito pag-uusapan. Hindi ito maayos kung mananahimik kang sa sagilid. At ipagpapabukas na lang ang problema. So, sabi nga nila, communication is the key. Kaya mahalaga kung makipag-usap tayo sa mga problema natin. So, may different forms of communication. So, first is yung bargaining. So, bargaining, seeking an agreement to a conflict through direct negotiation between parties. So, it is also a type of negotiation in which the buyer and seller of a good or service dispute the price which will be paid and the exact nature of the transaction that will be, take place and eventually come to an agreement. So, bargaining is an alternative pricing strategy to fix prices. So, for example, Bibili ka ng second hand na sasakyan. Kaso nagkulang ang iyong budget para mabili ito. So, magkipag-negotiate ka or bargaining sa seller para makuha yung price na magbe-benefit ka. Kaso, may mga cases na mahirap pinitin si seller. Which is dito papasok si top bargaining. Which may lower the other party's expectation, making the other side willing to settle for less according kay Yolk no 1974. But topness can sometimes backfire. So, pagalingan ito sa pagbabargain na kung saan mag-benefit ang dalawang parties para rin maiwasan ang conflict. Next is yung mediation. So, it's an attempt by a neutral third party to resolve a conflict by facilitating communication and offering suggestion. So, conflicting parties often have difficulty communicating. So, third party mediators help also help resolve conflicts by facilitating constructive communication. So, their first task is to help the parties rethink the conflict and to gain information about the other party's interest. So, by prodding them to set aside their conflicting demands and opening offers and to think instead about underlying needs, interests, and goals, the mediator aims to replace a competitive win-lose orientation with a cooperative win-win orientation that aims at a mutually beneficial resolution. So, ito yung tinatawag na integrative agreement. For example, May mga kapatid ka, maghahati-hati kayo sa mana. So, ikaw na panganay, at sasabihin mo, sa'yo yung ang mas malaki na hati, dahil panganay ka nga eh. Pero hindi pa payag yung mga kapatid mo, dahil malulugi sila. So, pwede dito pumasok si mediation, na kung saan, may isang neutral, o yung mediator, na gagawing win-win orientation yung situation, which will benefit the two parties. Next type of communication is yung arbitration. So, it is a resolution of a conflict by a neutral third party who studies both sides and imposes a settlement. So, for example, ang pinag-aagawa na teritoryo ng Pilipinas at China, na kung saan nanalo ang Pilipinas sa arbitral tribunal or arbitration ruling na ginawa ng the Permanent Court of Arbitration, which recognized Manila's sovereign rights to areas within its exclusive economic zone in the West Philippine Sea. Invalidating China's sweeping claim. So, the key findings of the ruling include China's claims to historic rights and resources within its nine dash line have no legal basis. So, dis disputants usually prefer to settle their differences without arbitration so that maritain nila yung control nila over, sa, over the outcome. So, in cases where differences seem large and irreconcilable, the prospect of arbitration may cause the disputants to freeze their positions, hoping to gain an advantage when the arbitrator choose a compromise. So, the last type of C is a peacemaking strategy is yung conciliation. So, conciliation is an alternative out-of-court dispute resolution instrument 
So, like mediation, conciliation is a voluntary, flexible, confidential, and interest-based process. So, the parties seek to reach an amicable dispute settlement with the assistance of the conciliator who acts as a neutral third party. So, sometimes tension and suspicion run so high that even communication ay hindi na gumagana. Imposible na siyang uh, maayos pa. Kasi may mga parties na, nag, na nagbibigay ng threats and nagre-retaliate sa, sa decision na hindi pabor sa kanila. So, dito ngayon papasok si GRIT o na tiyatawag na Graduated and Reciprocated Initiatives in Tension Reduction A Strategy Designed to Deescalate the International Tensions So, social psychologist Charles Osgood no 1962 and 1980 advocated the third alternative One that is conciliatory yet strong enough to discourage exploitation So, he nicknamed it GRIT A label that suggests the determination it requires So, GRIT aims to reverse the conflict spiral by triggering reciprocal de-escalation. So, to do so, it draws upon social psychological concepts such as the norms of reciprocity and the attribution of motives. So, so it aims to alleviate tense international situation. Those who mediate tense labor management and inter international conflicts sometimes use another peacemaking strategy. So they instruct the participants in the dynamics of conflict and peacemaking in the hope that understanding can help former adversaries establish and enjoy peaceful and rewarding relationships.